And look, as much as we would love to talk Matildas, but we've got to finish up on a high. Let's talk about some Central Coast Mariners. Now, what I'd like to do is go around each of you and ask, what do you love most about this women's team? And which player in our team either resembles you, your is your favourite player, or is just someone, for whatever reason, you think we need to be talking about? Lee, I'm going to start with you. Um, I it is Raf, Raf talks about like the Central Coast family, Central Coast community. I, I actually, when the um, PFA gave us the opportunity to become members of a, an, an A League W club, I, I actually became a member of the. Sydney FC, and then Raf started saying, "Oh, you know, you should come to the game at Central Coast, yeah, yeah." And Sydney FC, all I'm getting is the same emails that everyone else is getting. You go, you buy your ticket, you know, or you get in, and blah 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 blah. And that that was it. It's just same as everyone else. Whereas uh, Mariners have made us feel like we do belong to the club, and we are yeah. valued. Um, so I can totally understand what she's saying. And it does feel like in the old days, you were part of a community, like you were your club, your team, your club, um, your your rep team, your, your state team. Everyone felt like family. Yeah. And, and that's what Mariners, Mariners do, and they've done really well. Um, so, you know, I can't thank the guys there enough. Um, so... From a from a playing perspective, why do I like the team? I I I like watching the team. Uh, I kind of watch maybe a bit more analytical mm. than your average everyday um, spectator. Um, That's the coaching like coming up. Kind of the game apart, and there's lots to pick. But um, I can't fault their effort, their technical ability is good but could be better. Their tactical awareness is good but could be better. But I think that's aligned with how much they actually train and how much they play. So I believe that the bigger the investment, the better the quality of football. So they just haven't had enough yet they they would get better if we had a fully fully professional league yeah um and, and that's that that's what i want to see happen because that's that opportunity that we haven't been given yet yeah. so we're part way there but we need to 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 be fully professional for that for the quality of the games to be better and more consistent i think we could actually outdo the guys there because the guys are fully professional now. And, yeah. and I actually think some of the games that not just the Mariners have played, but the quality of the A-League W, probably from a consistency pers- perspective, is probably better than the guys. Um, as for a player, I would, I mean, I kind of have to pick Roller, even though she's a lot taller than I am. She's a lot slimmer than I am. <laughs> she's actually left-footed. And I wasn't um, because but apart from that, from, there's no difference, right? Apart from that, and she's American, <laughs> and I'm Australian. Apart from that, there's no difference. But she's come from our club, so um, you know, I, I would choose her. Absolutely, um, Renee. I mean, I know if I was to ask you, what do you love most about this women's team? We would be here for another three or four hours, if not another five or six podcasts. But can you break just something down to me that is really just, just really grabs you about this women's team, and yeah, give us a player that uh, you re- you relate to or just love watching. I'll keep it very short, Marty, and well recognised because I could bang on for a while. What <laughs> is there not to love about the Mariners? I'm sure. look, they they could be coming last in the league, and I would still love them and praise them highly. Um, I love everything about the Mariners: the community, the family, the inclusion, the connection, um, the bringing together of fans that become good friends for life. Um, uh, I, I just like, they, look, they play, they play gritty, gutsy football. They, they don't quit. Um, I like the way that the, they're, in, they're all inclusive, the way the club wraps their arms around them, supports them. The girls are treated, I believe, equal 
to the men, as in gear. I love the fact that their coach, Emily, is full-time, not mm. part-time. That tells me the club values her. Yeah. We've got a full-time male coach. We need to do the same with our female coach, no different. I love that. I love the equality in the club. Um, the, yeah, I love it. love everything about it. I think I'll cut it really short. The player for me is Rasmussen, local girl, buff point, played in Tukli. I got to chat to her. I think she's got huge potential. She's come through the Central Coast, which I love, her grassroots, which I resonate with, and the fact that the Mariners, when they came back in, it's the small things that the Mariners do that I just love that maybe not so many people know about is she was their first signing. They mm-hmm. showed respect to a local junior grassroots player. And that, for me, just explains what the Mariners are all about. It's mm-hmm. outstanding. And it's just the small things. I get quite passionate because Central Coast to me is where I grew up, where my fond memories are, where I had a great football community, my family, some of the best friends I made on the coast. There's outstanding families built this um, community of Central Coast football. So, yeah, for me, that's it's just all the little things that make the club great. And I'm absolutely gunning for them to be playing in that top six come finals time. I really, really hope they do. I think they deserve to be there. And uh, yeah. it just showed in the game in Sydney against FC, backs against the wall, lost their keeper, yeah. threw in their defender. I've lost a name for a moment, but uh, how Absolutely. gutsy and gritty was that? That just yeah. is what Central Coast football is about. No, 100%. Play great football, pretty, not so pretty, and still grab the win. They just guts it out. That's it. it. And as I've said to Emily all season, this this team makes the top six. I don't think anyone will want to play us because I think you have the momentum behind them and watch out. <laughs> um, yeah, Vicky, what about yourself? What what what's grabbed you about the Central Coast Mariners, and uh, what player can we put up in lights from you? Um, so talking to Renee after the World Cup and things like that. I, you know, same thing as what Lee was saying. The PFA asked us what team we'd like to follow. Yeah. And like previous years, we've just, because it's just probably just easy as well and we're, we are local, we've sort of gone with Sydney FC. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they, Renee sort of said, you know, look, these guys are really great. They've, you know, got a really good setup. They're a fantastic family club. Mm. And so just, you know, thought, yeah, why not? Let's do that. So it's you know an hour, an hour and a half up the up the up the road, and um, it's a great ground to watch football. But coming there, just even from day one, um, we um, we just so welcomed, and um, you know, it's just been fantastic. The sponsors, the individual sponsors that we've got with the girls, um, you know, we've been able to chat to quite a few of them. They're all passionate. Football fans, um, yeah, it's just been a great family, just really inviting. It's, you know, it's fantastic. I mean, even just talking to, you know, people like yourself on game day, I love the fact that they do that that um, family photo with the players and the fans at the end. It's brilliant. You know, the kids get on the pa- the um, New Year's Eve fireworks and, yeah. and, and the double match day that they did with that and whatnot. You know, the chats that we can have to Emily and and it's it's fantastic. Um, and as far as um, players go, I mean, look, everyone would probably say I'd say a goalkeeper, but I just can't go past Bay Bryson. She's mm. been a real rock at the back there. You know, takes corners. She's you know fantastic. She's got my vote. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. And yeah. yeah, there's plenty of love about the Central Coast. It's the, it's the it's the best of everything, including fan podcasts I've heard. But that's not for me to say. Um, Janine, what about yourself? What is it you 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 found yourself falling in love with about this club? And uh, yeah, give me a player. Yeah, look, I guess I found myself falling in love with club, um, or really respecting the club when Laurie McKinnon was coaching. I'm a yep. close close family member of, of Laurie's. Um, when he first came out to Australia, we billeted him and his wife and two kids in a caravan out the front of our house. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he's always been like a brother to me, and and when he was coaching the Mariners, I would I would fly up some weekends and 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 watch the the Mariners men um, play. And you know, if I wasn't flying up there, I was certainly watching them every game they played on TV from Melbourne. Um, so yeah, that's probably been my first love with the club. 
Um, when when Rafa, aka Harry High Pants, there sort of spoke <laughs> to us a little bit about um, about what the the club have done for the for the alumni. Um, I guess I got a little bit envious um, because living in Melbourne, you know, I certainly can't get up there every weekend um, as I as I once did. Um, but so I nominated Melbourne Victory, and whilst the Melbourne Victory Club has been has been good with myself and um, Carolyn Monk, who's another alumni, we we nominated yeah. Melbourne Victory. They gave us you know membership to both the men's and women's, and they kitted us out with a scarf. Um, but you know we certainly don't feel as he, the club's been as inclusive or, or welcoming to, you know, the former um, alumni or the history of the game hasn't had the respect that the Mariners have showed their their former players. Um, so, yeah, certainly if I picked a player, because um, I, I, I don't see them play a lot, but for me, um, Kaya Simon um, coming to the club, a former Matilda you know, she certainly um, would bring a lot of value to the young young girls in the team. Um, and to come back from an, a significant injury that she has had, uh, I'm hoping that she gets back to full fitness and, and she's playing the game that she loves and, and does so well at. Um, and, and she can certainly be a role model for, for the young girls coming through um, the Mariners Club. So for me, I'd love to see Kai get back on the paddock on a full-time basis and, and, and dominate as she has and... and, and as I said, invest in, in the youth of the Mariners yep. team. And, and, and credit yeah. to Kaya too, and all of the women's team actually, because you know, after every home game, they're right around the outside. Yeah. All the young kids that are running down, you see them. We, we've seen it for years with the men's, but now with the women's, five, ten minutes to go, the youngest kids are running up to the front. They know what's going to happen, and they will just. And players are out there an hour, hour and a half after their game with trainers yep. yelling at them. They want to go in and do their debrief and. Don't keep Emily waiting kind of thing, but Emily's out there signing autographs as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Kaya, who hadn't even got to get her boots on, come out from injury, was still out there doing the same thing. It's just mm. just, just amazing and, and stuff like that. Ray, what about for you? You get to, to wrap it all up. What what have you loved the most? What are you loving the most? And um, player-wise, who's your pick? Yeah, um, like the other ladies have said, I've really enjoyed being brought into the club as an alumni um, and now supporter of the Mariners and again, it's the little things like being able to be all together at the game, uh, networking and meeting all the sponsors, um, being able to go there for New Year's Eve and enjoy the fireworks after the game, being asked to go um, out onto the field at half time and be part of that entertainment, um, going onto the field after the games when they've won and mingling with the fans. And one one young bloke noticed that I had my Matilda alumni pin on my jacket and yeah. you know that sparks conversations and, and builds more excitement and I love the active group the the bunch of guys um up on the on the yeah. uh, uh northern side of the yeah. ground that get into it and they go the whole match yeah. you know so it's Thank all you. these things and but the, but the main thing is really being with the girls um this lot and celebrating the goals with the team and celebrating with the team afterwards down on the field and going out to breakfast with them and just being bought in and feeling like we're part of yeah. that. And we can sit there and, you know, share experiences with the girls as well. Like, um, And this this leads into to one of my favourite players that w- would be more like myself, which is um, Taryn King. Like being able to sit with her and talk to her about her injury. You know, she's tall, blonde and unfortunately injured <laughs> <laughs> and I've been there myself. So just being able to talk to her and make sure that she's got the support that um, she's going to need to to go through rehab and, and you know, probably for the first time understand what it is to be injured and have to yeah. go through that and all the recovery. And um, so that was pretty special uh, that day where we, we had breakfast with the girls. Mm-hmm. So it's just been such a different experience to be treated like this. Um but the one last thing I wanted to, to say, um, and it's in regards to the Matildas, um, being the founder of the Australian Sportswoman, yep. they're coming uh, back to Australia in May to play China in Adelaide. Did everyone know that? Ah. Mm. Adelaide. No, I'm having a game. Didn't know where it was. That's it's been announced Adelaide. today. Okay. China. Adelaide. Yeah. Ooh, what Adelaide. date, Trey? 31st. 31st of um, May. May. 
Are they playing in Sydney in June? You heard it Some... first. Marty Mariner's show. There we go. <laughs> Exclusive. Sure Exclusive. That, Exclusive. I'll get onto that. <laughs> Good job, McGov. ASW. Follow me yeah. on Insta and Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Australian sportswoman. We need to get onto that. We need to get onto that for sure. Um, look, I, I, I said to Renee before we start, this was it was an honour for me to be able to say, hey, come on, have a bit of a chat, bit of a teamwork, bit of a conversation with you guys. Um, I've been a football fan all my life, so this is something really, really special for me. Um, thanks so much for what you've done. Thanks so much for what you're doing. Um, the presence that you have at um, the women's games is just phenomenal. Um, even being in the crowd, people who see you around the place, it's just it's fantastic. It's, it's, it's brilliant for the club and it's, you know, the, the girls are doing a great job on the field. Em's doing a great co- a job coaching off the field. I think the club's doing a good job putting it together. But um, you're definitely a, a major piece of that puzzle. So uh, thanks so much for joining me for a, for a bit of a chat. I have really enjoyed it. And uh, I hope we get to do it again one day soon. Hey, Marty, can I just say one thing? I'd like to say a massive thank you to you for all you do. I love the Marty Mariners page. You're you're outstanding in keeping the football family and community updated Mm. with the podcasts are outstanding. You guys set the bar. The Mariners are setting the bar uh, right across the the men and women's leagues in their inclusiveness and their connection to community. Also, Dan at the Mariners. There's so many you could name. Sean, yeah. uh, Alistair, Gabby, Brooke. Like, the, the list goes on of the outstanding, wonderful people and and the way that you um, just presenting and promoting and supporting and embracing the Mariners with your podcast. It's I really appreciate you taking the time in speaking with us as well. It's an honour for yeah. me. You've yeah. got 3,000 followers, Marty. It's, how cool is that? And just at the football last night, one of the women up in the boxes uh, that we were talking to, she was super excited. She was, she's one of the mates. She's a sponsor Ellery, with Ellery and Moss yeah. at, at Terrigal. She was like, can't wait to find out what this podcast's about. You know, I said, well, it's going to be a, it'll be a good one. It'll be fun. So thank you, Marty, for taking your time to have yeah, a chinwag with a bunch of old, old thanks, Marty. alumni. Thanks, Marty. Thanks, Marty. Thanks, Marry. Thanks, Marty. Thanks, I, Marty. I, I, I could be Thanks, the Marty, Marty Mariner Show alumni because there's only one in that club so far. Yeah. But can count myself <laughs> as being old as well. Thanks, guys. I'll see you around the ground and uh, yeah, go the Mariners. Yeah, yeah go, go the Mariners. The Mariners. Hey. Hey. And that brings us to the end of our series of sowing the seeds and sowing on badges. What an absolute honour that was to have a chat. And uh, there's a part of me that wishes I'd have kept recording because we chatted for a little bit after the uh, the, uh, the the farewell you just saw. And um, the banter between these uh, these women is just fantastic. And, um, you know, they do such good things for our game. They have been there. They have done it. They have, they have set the actual pathways. Um, we wouldn't have our Matildas where they are now if it wasn't for these um these women to who who got out there and got it done i mean we're talking about doing their own fundraising we're talking about you know paying their own way you know this all seems so foreign to us now but to hear it from those that were there um again it makes us uh, realize how quickly we have come in a in a relatively short space of time when you when you look at the history of the game so thank you to lee wardell to trey mcgovern to vicky cerny Denise mcphee and renee isra the absolute legend that she is for uh, for being here and having that chat, a bit of a chinwag and a bit of a conversation. Uh, I really, really hope you enjoyed it. As I said at the start of the uh, the first episode, um, if you're watching us uh, through YouTube, make sure you subscribe to uh, the channel. It uh, helps us spread the word, helps us uh, let people know about uh, our game here in Australia and uh, people can find out more about our Matilda's alumni. And if you're, of course, listening, um, on Spotify, on uh, on Amazon, on iHeartRadio, uh, Apple Podcasts. Uh, don't forget to hit those likes, those follows, those downloads, and all those hearts and different things that you can do. You know what you do when you go on there. Uh, it is greatly appreciated. And, and I must say, thank you too to everyone who shares the program around too. More than welcome to share it around. The more, the merrier I say. Okay, that is the shows. 
for uh, the Matildas alumni. We will have to catch up with them again soon because that was just so much fun. Really, really hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you at a Mariners game very, very shortly. Looking forward to that. Go the mighty yellow and blue. And uh, we'll see you again very, very soon. It's been the Marty Mariner Show. <laughs>